Oh, oh there yeah. you go. Okay. No, not that thing. Tricks about this one. Yeah, yeah. we should check the microphones too. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to have my phone view. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see what we're live streaming. Right now. Yeah, yeah. And you get a really good card. I found an interest in skateboard that came out. So you can see what it is right on, so let me know how it affects the live stream as well. Okay, I'll keep talking. Hello everyone, we'll be starting in about five minutes. So we also live stream. So let me know if this sounds okay on the live stream. Fine. Okay. So Craig, to pause. Okay, it's fired up again. Yeah, and it's uh, hey, <laughs> Make sure once once things start. Is there any way we could direct people in the far door? Pardon me? Is there any way we could direct people yeah. in the far door? I'm gonna close this door. Okay. It's like Go outside and play. Yeah. Yeah. Now kids are like, stay inside and play. Yeah. You know, so. So you get 10% in many shops if you reduce them like that. Keep it. For the, for the outlet, when you go there, you go into this website, you, you register with this uh, code, and then you get 10% um, yeah, in many shops. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so really, really only kind of pipe shows that you do you do any of the other, well, you do uh, China, yeah, and your yeah. wife, right? And then, uh, uh, I know there's some, uh, yeah. you can you order? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You attend those? Yeah. 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 There's still a preference in the only market for a collector of lights. You can find it. You have to turn around. That's strange. Are you warm enough at crowd theory? 
<laughs> halftime show. Britney Spears couldn't make it today. <laughs> So I will start by introducing myself. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Brian Levine. I am not native of China. I have never been to China. I know nothing about China. Well, I know a little bit about China, but I know nothing about the pipe culture in China and what's going on there. So I'm kind of excited about this because I want to learn what's going on in China. To start off with, Ping Zan, who is a pipe maker and directly from, where in China are you from? Uh, I'm from a little city called Dalian, coastal city. Coastal city, yeah. So oh. somewhere down the chicken. Uh, somewhere up. Up the chicken. chicken. At the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the country of China, it yeah. looks like a chicken. Chicken, yeah. yeah. So that's why you asked where I'm the chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I know that. Okay. And then if you would introduce sure. the other, yeah. Yeah, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, let me introduce uh, our friends, my friends here. This is uh, Zhang Guohui, uh, and uh, that's his younger brother, Zhang Guoqing. So they uh, have a company called the JH Zhang uh, Pipe Making Workshop, which is uh, responsible for making those pipes, and uh, you can find them on smoking pipes and other websites, and also, of course, in China. So. Uh, <coughs> They have been uh, working on the, the uh, company for last uh, six or seven years. So in the beginning, of course, it's a uh, very slow, and uh, later on, right now, we're getting better and better. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and their English is much better than my Mandarin, which is like zero, so we may use, yeah. a, we may use yeah. a translation at times. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to answer it and uh, talk uh, with Brian, and uh, if I have any anything uh, not sure about the numbers or anything, I'm going to ask them. Yeah. So they can just uh, see. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, I think they're going to see in the front row. Okay. Yeah. 
And just for my for my yeah. point, so the family name is Zhang. 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 But in China, normally you would say Zhang first. Yeah. Yeah. So officially, family name, given name. So we would all be completely backwards from what we're used to in the Western world. So. Yeah, a little bit different. Yeah. So just before we get started, first of all, let's start getting your questions ready because you guys will have better questions than I will. Um, and we'll have plenty of time for that, plus we got a little video. When did you first become aware of pipe smoking? Yeah. Uh, uh, I started smoking pipes in 2009. So back then I don't know nothing. That uh, you know, I just uh, find a pipe on the online shop, Taobao, which is the Chinese eBay kind of thing, and which uh, I got the uh, cheap ones and uh, try to smoke and uh, and I uh, select a uh, get uh, aromatic, which is very light, and so I burn my tongue at the first uh, few attempts. You know, <laughs> it's a very uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, tough, uh, tough experience. But uh, you know, later on, I uh, you know got interest, interested in the pipe smoking and the tobacco and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, different uh, pipe makers brand and uh, everything. Yeah. And then you know, I think probably I can make the pipe. So that's the beginning. So I start to make the pipe, make, make, try to make the pipe in 2011. So, which is uh, uh, two years later, after I start smoking pipes, and uh, uh, without any you know preparation, I just uh, bought the legs. You know, I, I want to do it proper way, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I know this is the most important tool for pipe making. So I got the lace, got the two blocks, which is very expensive, uh, about 80, 90 dollars uh, equivalent, you know, uh, for one block with a good plateau, good grain. And uh, I destroyed those blocks <laughs> within 20 minutes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So then I realized it's uh, not easy to do it properly, especially when you do it, you know, freehand. Uh, and also, you know, do the, you know. So it's, it's a, a long curve to learn. Yeah. Would, would you see other men in China smoking a, a, a tobacco pipe? Or did you only find it on the internet? Uh, basically, we uh, we have uh, every city have a kind of a little group or clubs that uh, you know we know each other because we have a common uh, hobby, mm -hmm. uh, which is can be you know very you know good for the communication and uh, we become friends. In our city, in my in my small group uh, groups, maybe around 10, 20 people. We, we used to you know get around uh, very frequently, but uh, later on life happens, you know. Yeah. But I think that, uh, as, I, as far as I know, you know, in Beijing, Shanghai, bigger cities, there are more uh, these kind of groups. Maybe not uh, mixed together, but some somebody you know uh, knows somebody in that group or uh, that type of thing. But uh, we have a you know a, a that's okay number of uh, you know pipe smokers, but it's hard to find on the street. <laughs> you know? yeah. it's a little bit different than the than U.S. or Europe. Because when I travel to Europe, I can sometimes I can find somebody smoking pipe just walking on the street. Right. Yeah. Is it possible for somebody in China to go into a tobacco store that may also sell some pipes and have some brands yeah. that we would know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't have a tobacco store per se. We have the you know a small grocery store selling tobacco and uh, selling cigarettes. Okay. And some other, you know, the pet shops, basically. They, well, it's a, right now it's a, well, for, for the legal part of things, that uh, you cannot sell tobacco, uh, pipe tobacco, if you don't have the assets. Right. Especially, you know, the, the imported stuff. Because the tobacco business is controlled by the nation, uh, most, most of the part is for uh, cigarettes, and also cigars, and uh, of course pipe tobacco, but uh, because the uh, uh, legal thing, you cannot uh, make the pipe tobacco, you know, as a personal thing and uh, all a, per a small personal company to sell them to the audience. It's not possible. Yeah. So when you go to Germany or Denmark right. and you see a pipe tobacco shop with a wall of oh, yeah. tobaccos, you oh, go, yeah. I was doing. <laughs> yeah. 
it's uh, just you know. Uh, but for for us, you know, we are we can uh, access the internet to go to smoking pipes or uh, some other websites in all over the world, and uh, we buy them and uh, ship to our address and uh, pay the tax, which is the fifty percent, and then you know plus the uh, uh, yeah fifty five zero. So, uh, so and uh, with the shipping fee, so basically ten dollar team become eighteen dollars. So yeah. 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 And maybe when did you guys first understand about tobacco pipes or learn about pipe smoking? Uh investor early in the evening. Yeah. 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 So in 2017, we start uh, trying to make a map and uh, get some blocks, and uh, you know, you know, and uh, he uh, also realized that uh, for in China it's hard to get wire. So he started. Uh, he set up a company to import wire from Italy, you know, uh, Greece. You know, that's uh, yeah. yeah. So, what in, in China the most popular thing to smoke is cigarettes. Yeah, and, and most <coughs> Chinese men smoke. Lots well, of it, I don't, I don't think it's the most, but I think probably three hundred million smokers. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. I want to, for those of you here in the United States of America, he just said three hundred million male smokers. Not male smokers. All, all total. All, yeah, three hundred million. So that's the in, almost the entire population, population yeah. of the United States. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for pipe smoking, it's very, very little percentage yeah. of, the, of the whole thing. So that's why, you know, the, the pipe uh, tobacco, because uh, the, the pipe tobacco business is controlled by the nation, by the you know, national company, and uh, because the pipe tobacco or, or pipe smokers are, compared to the cigarettes, are very, very little. Kind of a mosquito slack compared to an elephant, you know. Yeah. So that's why it's very, very late to for for them for those companies to get started with the pipe tobacco business. So there are uh, few companies uh, selling, uh, getting on the on the business right now. Yeah. So let me ask you the hard question now. Sure. If the GH pipes become very popular and people and men in China want and women in China want to smoke pipes all of a sudden, where do we get the pipes from? Right. So I have to. I think I have to. You know, uh, uh, talk about uh, you know a little history about pipes, pipe smoking in, in China. That uh, you know, uh, I think uh, that pipe smoking or other you know so-called luxury uh, hobbies. Are come from uh, uh, based on you know the popularity based on the economy. So back then in 80s, 1980s, that probably more pipe smokers grow, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, new pipe smokers in popping up in Japan because the economy is very good. So uh, for the last 30 years, uh, Chinese economy gets very good and very quick. So I think at the end of maybe at the end of uh, uh, 1990s. Uh, more and more pipe smokers because you know uh, become the, the you know uh, have no know the pipe smoking and uh, you know start uh, the hobby. So uh, from 2000, as an early 2000, I know a few friends uh, about my age, which is so back then they are 20 ish. So they start uh, you know uh, smoke pipes. So and. Uh, and uh, right now, there are more young, younger generations that uh, start some pipes, especially after the uh, during the COVID. You know, everybody stay at home and doing nothing. And uh, you know, <laughs> if you are you, if you are a smoker, right, so smoke cigarettes. I think uh, they tend to you know try different new things, curious, right? So they, if they find a cigar, sure, it's uh, easy and uh, you know. Cool, you know, yeah. and expensive, especially uh, for the last uh, few years, cigar uh, prices goes up quite a bit. So there are uh, also a whole bunch of uh, cigar smokers 
become a pipe smoker. And also at the meantime, you know, the new uh, younger generations realize the pipe as a hobby. Yeah. And also another thing is the Chinese version of the TikTok gets very, very you know popular. Almost everybody have an account. So they just uh, screw up uh, for, for, the, for the new information. You know, they, they find uh, uh, similar contents and uh, because the algorithm, you know, they, they're pushing all the similar stuff to you. So, and also at the same time, uh, all the pipe uh, shops have a, you know, uh, a channel or, or uh, official account on there. So they're pushing the pipes as well. So but it could it could be very tough for for the pipe supply if the business right. all of a sudden yeah. people start yeah. saying oh I'm going to smoke a pipe yeah, yeah. so basically we uh, in the beginning as I said uh, 20 years ago 30 years ago we get all the pipes from uh, Europe or US or you know all over the world uh, not in China from China and uh, and then you know about uh, pipe making in China is uh, only a little bit over 20 years. Uh, the uh, pipe makers popping up, and the uh, new makers uh, become you know better and better, you know. And uh, basically, in the beginning, we all smoke uh, a brand, a foreign brand, European brand, or American brand, or European makers or American makers pipes. And mm -hmm. now, because uh, the popularity goes up, so there are many Chinese pipe makers, according to uh, the numbers or the, the group chat for the material, because they do the material business, right? There are over 300 pipe makers in China. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Only 300. Only. Only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got questions from the audience, yeah. so we'll, we'll go to that. I'll, go, I'll come back to you, Mark, because Mark knows nothing about the track. <laughs> so, yes, sir. I've read recently that the demographics in China are changing dramatically with cigarette consumption. They're moving away from the premium tier into the lower tier cigarettes pricing. And I'm wondering, this isn't so much a history, but a future thing for the pipe category in China. I'm wondering what are the demographics of the pipe consumers? And is it the upper income, the medium, lower income, and what are the prices of the pipes that typically they're buying in China now? Great question. Great question. So, uh, yeah, as you know that uh, in China, the cigarettes can be cheap and also can be very expensive. So, uh, for the pipes that, uh, uh, I think we, we all, uh, the pipe community in the US and China are very similar, that uh, if you have a less budget, you buy the cheaper ones, right? If you have more money, you buy the more expensive ones. Since, uh, because China has a big population, 1.4 billion, right? And, uh, uh, according to the uh, statistics, there are 300 million or around that number uh, uh, middle class. So in, the, in those uh, numbers, maybe some of those have more money, maybe uh, some of those have uh, less money. But uh, that means middle class means we, you can you can uh, they can spend extra because they have uh, more extra in their pockets. So basically, I think. Uh, if I get it right, that uh, maybe 80% or uh, maybe 60 to 80% buying the uh, middle middle range of the pipes, maybe 10, maybe less than 10, buying the very expensive ones. Especially 10 years ago, when I got started, I travel around Europe, and also I uh, travel with my friend who owns a pipe shop. So he. Uh, go to the European pipe shops to find the uh, premium pipes, uh, handmade, you know, made, uh, made by the masters, which is very expensive, but uh, they sell very quickly. So it so it's, uh, depends on your budget, basically. Yeah. It, it's, it's also that in, in China, the cigarette market, there are very cheap cigarettes for like 50 cents per pack, and then there's very expensive ones up to 20 and $30. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so all price ranges of cigarettes yeah. in between. Yeah. And we have a question up front here. So. Hey, uh, I heard you say earlier you rarely saw somebody smoking a pipe on the street. In the States, there are places you can't smoke a pipe on the street, and there are very few public buildings where you can smoke. Is that true in China also? <coughs> I mean, you almost have to be in a private home in the States. 
Yeah, uh, basically, you know, in China, there are a uh, trend of, uh, um, you know, uh, banning the smoking in general, but we do it uh, slowly. Basically, right now in Beijing or Shang and Shanghai, the major cities, metropolis, doing the more restricted uh, rules. Uh, you cannot smoke in the restaurant, you, know, you cannot smoke in the, in the public places, but in the smaller cities, you can smoke almost everywhere. Even in a taxi. <laughs> Wait, so if I come to uh, Shanghai Disneyland, no, no smoking in the uh, hotel? I don't think but, you can. Yeah. But outside, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, good. <laughs> Anybody else with any questions from the audience? Yeah, we'll go down here and then up here. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just wondering about the, the difference between, or cigarettes are the most popular. Cigars, where would that fit in between? pipe smoking and uh, cigarettes. Is that, like in the US, it's much more popular for cigars than pipes here, but just I think the same, yeah, it's the same. But especially the, the price goes up for the last few years, many of the cigar smokers turn to, you know, pipe smoking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and many of the cigars in China are Cuban cigars, correct? Yeah. yeah. It's that little island that we can't get to. Uh, Tim, you'll be second. Or did you want the bathrooms out the door and I'll try? <laughs> yes, sir. So my, my question is this. So in terms of pipe making, you, you said that uh, pipes really began being made in China about 20 years ago. I sort of have a two-part yep. question. So, you know, if we think about pipe making here oftentimes in terms of a, a sort of a master-student relationship. Right. Um, is, is that the same way in China, or is it really more sui generis, where you guys sort of learned independently uh, by trial and error? Um, or, or do you have some sort of inputs into Western, you know, maybe yeah. European or yeah. American uh, masters that you learned from? Yeah. That, that was my first question. Yeah. The second question is, um, the same way with pipe making, we also, in terms of pipe collectors, we have in the United States and in Europe, we have famous pipe collectors as well. Right. Are they famous pipe collectors? They are. Are they? They are. The, 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 the collections they have is going to blow your mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. And the money you spend on pipes? Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, to answer your first question, that uh, we, uh, my personal experience that uh, I uh, learned the pie making from the websites, which is uh, the forum. We have the pie making forum in the US, right? Mm -hmm. So I got uh, mo uh, many information from that forum and also uh, YouTube. As Jeff, you know, made uh, so many uh, very, very informative inf uh, videos and put on YouTube. And also some other, you know, so uh, in the beginning, I'm very thirsty, thirsty for the for the you know pie making you know uh, information I can get. So I uh, do you know in my daytime work. I don't do the work. They're just you know <laughs> search for the information. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and then you know I, I met uh, Tom Elton in 2012 uh, personally, but uh, we just uh, have a conversation about pie making. And uh, he's very generous and uh, uh, love to share. And uh, he told me which part can be doing better and uh, how, you know. And also, you know, uh, he invited me to uh, to his uh, celebration, 40 year celebration, uh, anniversary celebration uh, in Denmark in his workshop. So I went in 2014, <coughs> and uh, at that trip, I visited many many uh, European makers, you know, and uh, I learned a lot uh, from them and. Uh, and go back, I do the, uh, you know, practice and uh, try, try to, uh, you know, new techniques and uh, new shapes and uh, what have you. And then my uh, pipes, so long scan pipes in 2013. So you were there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, weird. And uh, in the meantime, when, when I get uh, a little bit uh, known by the pipe community in, in China, uh, some uh, Young pie makers wants to learn, so they can they, they contact me, and uh, you know I'm a very open-minded guy, and uh, I want to share my knowledge. So it's not a not a kind of a teacher or student uh, uh, relationship per se, but uh, I can you know if you want to learn, just come to my workshop, and I can teach you. Yeah.
that's it. You know, uh, but uh, uh, I'm this way, but I, I think there are, I heard that there are other, you know, pipe makers, makers uh, kind of a traditional way, but yeah, depends, yeah. Uh, one follow-up question from me. If I have a whole bunch of unsmoked bow Nord pipes, do you have a collector in China that would like to buy them for me? For... Yeah. Okay, good. All right, Tim, have you had a question, <laughs> sir? So you noted that you have over 300 carvers in China alone. Yeah. What about, like, what's the state of the Chinese estate market? Um, estate pipes here in the United States, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of estate pipes, be they old Donald yeah. Sheridan's, Weber pipes. Is there, like, and I've done a lot of transactions with Chinese estate dealers as well. Yeah. What's the, I mean, what's the interest like in the Chinese market for estate pipes? Yeah, we, uh, we kind of have a, you know, there are different collectors, you know, uh, and some of the collectors uh, collect uh, uh, old Stanwell pipes or old downhill pipes. So they, uh, they find their way to get them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some uh, pipe collectors collect the uh, high end, which is very expensive, full nerd or you know, Mickey or you know, what have you, you know. JL. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is depends on the on the on the uh, mentality of the pipe collector. Yeah. So it's a very. Is it night or is it all day long? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, so uh, because in the in the uh, Mediterranean regions there are so many prior trees okay. on the on the bank and everywhere, and also the thing is, is it's not we don't have enough prior, is is we don't have enough uh, workers to go into the mountains, go into the hills to harvest the roots. That's the thing. The labor is. is Lacking in this business, yeah, yeah. Could you a ask them? Maybe are, are they working on getting maybe labor to go to those mountains and do the harvesting? We were thinking about it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't. Briar? No. Mountain no, briar. The the heath bush is really regional, right. and it needs that proximity to the sea and the salt water. And yeah. And the climate. Yeah. If, even we want to grow the briar in China. It's almost impossible. It's different, different uh, terroir, right? Yeah. It cannot be grown. Yeah. And how long would it take? Well, <laughs> at least twenty years minimum. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot invest a whole bunch of money and uh, expect, uh, you know, twenty years later we're gonna get good briar. It's not possible. I, I, whiskey. Right. <laughs> I, I just want to note that Ping's Ping's English is so well that he used the word terroir. Correctly, and I can't even spell it. So there we go. <laughs> or pronounce it. Any other any questions from the crowd here? Because we can also start talking about the about the GH pipes sure. and yeah. and the project that happened. Yeah. The, we've had this little discussion on a thing called the Pipes Magazine radio show, which many of you have fallen asleep to on a regular basis. Uh, but it would be great to go over. Yeah. It and of course. Yeah. Uh, and where is? Yes, please play, play the video. And uh, in these videos, well, we're going to show you how it's made. That uh, the whole process from a block, from a Ebonite to a pipe. So uh, basically, you know, uh, the, the, the collaboration works. Uh, we are collaborating with pipe makers all around the world. And, uh, you know, the design uh, is unique to the pipe maker. And uh, we do the you know making part, right? So basically, we have the uh, prototype, and we scan it, CD scanning, and uh, do a little adjustment to fit the uh, the machine. Uh, this is uh, designed by Jack. That's this this one. So this is this part is. Uh, uh, designing and uh, select the uh, wire. And uh, yeah, cut, uh, cut the wire and put it on the machine. And uh, kind of milling it uh, on the machine. Eight pipes uh, 
each one. Wow. Yeah. And then everything else uh, finished by hand. So hand sanding, you know, drilling by hand to the tenon and the center airway. The stem by hand. Yeah. As a time maker, you know, it's a very familiar process after the CNC. Yeah, so this is sandblast, and uh, one of those is uh, smooth. So, uh, hand sanding to get rid of the dark stain and the uh, black stain. And then, <coughs> a little bit uh, sanding in the bowl and uh, finish. And stamping. So, let's pause. Uh, I, I need to explain the, the stamping. So it's, uh, this the year, right? It's very easy to figure out. This is the branch, JH Zhang, and this is the uh, car designer uh, for this shape. And uh, this is the uh, the shape number, which is the second one uh, designed by Jeff. The first one they, they couldn't make because it was too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this is the unique number for this year and this shape designed by this uh, So each, each pipe is made in limited amounts? Yeah, because uh, it's not uh, uh, limited per se. It's, uh, you know, we, we run a, ba a batch for 100 or less. Because we, it's, uh, sometimes the shape is too big or too complicated. We try to find the best wire fit uh, to the shape. So maybe less than 100. Ideally, we make 100 uh, at once. Yeah, and then if the market uh, says it's very good and uh, very popular, we make a little bit more. Yeah, and then uh, China, of course, and uh, the last one is the uh, origin of the Bohai. So we have uh, Italy and uh, uh, Spain, you know, uh, Greece, uh, and uh, you know, yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, every pipe have the you know. All the information you can get. Yeah. So now, if you want, you can buy one of the pipes from Italy, one from Greece, and one from Spain, and then taste the differences in the brand. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the the main the thing that I that surprised me the most, and I've been in several large pipe factories, is yeah. that you are it with the with the G H Zhang pipes. <laughs> they're trying to select blocks that work for those shapes to accentuate the grain, which is something that a pipe maker would do. Yeah. Not always in a pipe factory. Yeah, you know we uh, try to do our best to not only you know the shape and uh, the stem and also the, the green and the finish. You know if we just uh, select a big enough block, and uh, probably you know, the pipe came out ugly. You know because the green doesn't match. Right. Okay. That's. Uh, Continue. And then we make uh, the a card. So in the package, there's a card. So the, the picture is the exactly one in the box. So it's a total match. And also the serial number on the, on the paper, you know, everything's just a one to one. And, uh, yeah. And then the other thing is that these, since these pipes are all done in coordination with the original pipe maker, yeah. the pipe maker gets to make a little money and yeah. gets to eat food or you know like pay yeah. for electricity for their for their workshop while they're not having to work all the time. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So, um, which pipe makers do we have here on the table? Uh, right now we have uh, Alex, uh, me, uh, Kalilius Mans. Uh, Boris Stockhoff and uh, Dilly Hopper, and also uh, Jeff, J. Allen. So uh, there are six we show, because we, we only have a few videos, we show, uh, you know, yeah. 
And we have more in, in the box. We're gonna put it in the in the show on our tables, and uh, you guys can take a look. Yeah. Any questions from the hip? Yep, here I come. Coming to the back. Why is it always the guy in the back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this means I get to eat an extra cupcake today or something. All the yes, sir. Where's the best place to uh, look at purchasing these? Uh, as far as a website or how smoking pipes. Contact you? Smoking pipes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, Chicago Pipe Show. Oh yeah, Chicago Pipe Show as well. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, Tim, is there a pipe show in Chicago? <laughs> now I, I noticed that uh, this pipe that you were making was chucked in a in a lane. I was wondering, is it getting more common to see more pipe makers uh, freehand drilling? Where they actually have the drill bit and the blade, and they actually hold it still. Or? Yeah, it depends on the process. Uh, the, in the video, it's the kind of a mass produced or you know factory made uh, process. So because we have to uh, you know replicate the exact shape, curve, and uh, you know lines uh, for the from from the original prototype, we have to use the CNC machine to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, go all over the place. So, and for the handmade pipes, uh, what I do is, you know, I just follow the, the, the tradition and route and the technique, you know, uh, shape first and uh, drill later and uh, fit the span and finish the pipe. So, it uh, depends on the process. Yeah. Any other? Oh, good. Wait, I'll come around instead of climbing over people. Then I might trip and fall on that video, and that wouldn't look good. Yes, sir. Yes, I. Do you mostly just work with Briar, or do you work with other woods like uh, cherry wood? Uh, cherry wood, olive. 99% uh, Briar. We're trying to use some other wood, but uh, I think the acceptance doesn't, I, I don't think it's, a, you know, yeah. It's, it's not familiar to the pipe smokers to use other woods. Uh, in China, that you know, of course, briar is the best uh, material for making pipes, as we all agree, right? Yeah. Yes. We have a question from a <laughs> new pipe maker here. I'll just give you the microphone. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about the other, the non-collaboration pipes that G. Uh, John makes? Oh yeah. And also, I, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, the the, the price range that. Right. Both the collaboration pipes fall into, as well as the uh, the, the non-collaboration pipes. Right. So uh, for the collaboration pipes, it starts with uh, 230 dollars, right? Yeah, for, for, for the sandblast. And uh, for the smooth, it's 390 dollars for the collaboration. And uh, for the non-collaboration, uh, it will be a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So you can you can find the price on smoking pipes. Yeah, it's very easy to figure out. Yeah. What? Yeah. What parts of a pipe design would a artisan pipe maker do that she and Sean can't replicate because of the CNC? Right. You know, uh, for the pipe designing, you know, every pipe maker have a unique uh, style, which is uh, not necessarily for because. Uh, not necessarily for, for uh, some crazy shapes, but for the curves and uh, the proportion of uh, stem or uh, you know everything, the whole whole thing. So uh, to a, a non-educated uh, person, you can he cannot or she cannot uh, figure out uh, what is a good shape pipe. So that's why we collaborate with you know seasoned or you know experienced pipe makers to design the shape. You can tell the difference that, uh, you know, uh, on the table, you know, you can, you can find this shape is unique to certain uh, pan maker, and uh, this shape is to the other. So, for, if, uh, we, we also have, of course, we have the, you know, non-collaborated uh, sh uh, shapes, but it's more turned to traditional way that, you know, it's just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, adjust the, the proportion and curve a little bit, but for 
this kind of uh, uh, shape is almost impossible. Yeah, because it uh, depends on the person. That you know, uh, comparing to you know painting, you know, so you know the, the AI going on, right? So uh, I rather buy the origin painting from the painter, right? So it's not AI <laughs> made yeah. a graded, right? So it's the same same thing, yeah. How many pipes a year can they make? Uh, for the last year, uh, uh, the workshop made uh, uh, 23,000 pipes. Uh, which, you know, uh, some of those are the collabor uh, collaboration work, and uh, some of those are the others. Yeah. And most of them sold in China or sent out? Uh, most of them sold in China, yeah. Any other? Oh, wait, we have a question from the most noted fan of white ever, <laughs> Mr. Craig Harrell. Here I come, behind the camera. So I actually have a couple of questions. Let's start with, uh, I'm curious about the stems. Uh, you talked a little bit more about you know, shaping the stumble. Mm -hmm. uh, are the stems, you know, what kind of materials do you use? And, uh, you know, are, is it done by hand? Is it mostly yeah. done? How, how do you do that? Yeah. Uh, every stem we made, uh, we we use ebonite and or color. And your second question is, sir? Uh, I'm curious about uh, pipe clubs, pipe shows in in China. Uh, do you have something like the Chicago show? Yeah, we uh, we are having uh, the Chengde show, which is the city is very close to Beijing. Uh, how far? Maybe two two hundred kilometers. I don't know. How, how far is it in miles? But uh, uh, 120. Cool. So uh, we many of the you know pipe makers here right now uh, attend to the uh, the show and uh, and uh, that show already uh, hold for I think 11 years uh, this year I think and uh, and uh, there's another show in Shanghai in on the first of June. So uh, this is a new show uh, host hosted by the uh, as we talk about about the, the tobacco and the national owned. This is the uh, national tobacco museum. So this is the official uh, uh, government owned uh, company uh, as the host. And uh, so uh, it can be uh, right now uh, the show will be 150 tables. And uh, if the, the audience uh, have a, bad, a good uh, review, we're gonna have uh, maybe more, 200 or 300 something. Yeah, we have the space, and uh, we just need uh, the the pipe maker and the, the pipe smokers. Yeah, they're starting a pipe show with 150 tables. Just that there's a few of us that understand those numbers. Craig, did you have any? I'm just curious about the uh, museum. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, our one of our founders here, uh, Frank Barilla, had a notable pipe museum, and I uh, understand that uh, it was sold to someone in China. It, yeah. Is it possible that you the cigarettes or the tobacco growing or the history, the whole history of the? Uh, yeah. yeah. Can I add something to it? Yeah. The Frank Barilla collection in Tianjin. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman who owns the hotel there and. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's possible to see if you go to Chengdu, not to the show. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the Chengdu show yeah. has a, you know, the, the, the boss of the, you know, the whole thing has a museum, personal museum. It's not a national museum. Right. That's why I didn't mention, yeah. My wife would call that a massive collection. Here comes the question. Mr. Mark Ryan. Not meaning to put you on the spot, so I'm going to. I know in the past there was concern by the prior people of sending prior to China because they were concerned that they were going to be copying some of the extremely expensive Danish pipes and selling them as authentic. And I'm wondering if that's an issue that you deal with now. Thank you, Mr. Question. Actually, Ping and I had, and Jeff and I had a discussion about this seven, eight months ago, 
And some of you will remember there was another pipe studio, another pipe group that started up about 10, 12 years in China, and they were replicating shapes and doing stuff. Uh, the beautiful part about what they're doing with the G.H. Zhang group is that they're working with the pipe makers and bringing them in instead of just saying, you know, we're just going to copy you. They're inviting them to come in and submit their shapes and, and have these production runs done so everything's above board. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, because we noticed, you know, years ago, we noticed uh, the uh, phenomenon that just, uh, you know, uh, people just uh, copy and uh, sell the, the shapes uh, other makers made. So, in his mind, that's, we can just uh, collaborate, right? And also, in the meantime, uh, the designer or pen maker can get a, a little bit from Tonight at 8.30 for cash, cash, 50% of what we take in, you win. Um, Saturday night, uh, the drive tonight is at 8.30. Uh, you, if you don't win, keep your ticket, and there's another drawing Saturday evening for one. Who wants to draw? Yeah. 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 The winning ticket is Office Depot. <laughs> Office <laughs> Depot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Four, five, nine. Six three, and then say the last two in uh, in in Mandarin. <laughs> okay, you got it. Forty one. Forty one. Forty one. Three four one. Nice. Congratulations. We have a verification of the Office Depot is the winner.